Hello again, Dave Kalischuk here from Owen Sound Flight Services with another EDM 830 training program video. Uh, this one is uh, indexing overview module number three on the 830 and we're going to be talking about the um, mostly the numerical display and the indexing and um, how the toggle switch uh, works and functions. So let's jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to start you off with a quick video from JPI, short one, and then we'll chat about that. One minute after the EDM is turned on, it will automatically start to index through all parameters. While in the scan mode, tapping the white step button will stop the automatic scan and take you into the manual indexing mode. To begin or resume automatic indexing, tap the black lean find button and then tap the white step button. All right, buttons, buttons, buttons. Tap step, tap lean find, blah, blah. <laughs> Why did they name one of their buttons lean find? Only to support one of the features of the many features that the button does. Makes it kind of confusing, but let's keep it simple. Okay, we only got two buttons to press. One does one thing, one does another. So, the numerical display. Um, basically, we have options of what we want to display at the bottom of the unit. So what we're seeing here is a horizontally mounted uh, EDM. Ours is vertically mounted, so the bottom is wider on this display than in ours. But uh, in either case, the numerical display will show up at the bottom. And that display can show one parameter, typically one parameter, maybe two if it's combined with CHT and EGT. But in the vertical orientation, or portrait orientation, I guess you'd call it, uh, it just shows one parameter. So any of the parameters that have probes installed can be displayed there at one time. When the unit first starts up, it goes into an automatic indexing mode, which means it automatically cycles through all of the parameters that uh, it can show you in that, um, depending on where the toggle switch is located, which we'll talk about in a second. So automatic indexing means it shows you a value uh, of one parameter for about four seconds and then uh, switches to another one and then switches to another one and it keeps on indexing through uh, different modes. So that's the automatic indexing mode and that's the mode that is default at the time you start up the unit. Um, basically the numerical display cycles every four seconds and it will show you a new parameter. If you want to pause that or stop it on any of the parameters that it's showing at the time simply press the white step button. Pressing the white step button will stop it from automatically indexing and will put it into the manual indexing mode, meaning it won't continue cycling through information anymore. It will just hold on the current uh, one that you want. And that can be handy if you're trying to see um, a parameter that you don't already have in your linear gauges. So you've ran out of data fields in the linear gauges or the way you've optimized your display there's only a few display um, settings. The way you've optimized it uh, doesn't show you as many uh, linear gauge fields as you'd like. So you want to have uh, one of the parameters pause in the indexing uh, in the numerical display. So you can do that by stopping the automatic indexing by just pressing the step button when you see that item. Um, then you can also um, go through or step through the other parameters by tapping that step button. So if you tap the white button, it will go to the next parameter and display that in the numerical display. And if you hold the step button, the white button, it will go backwards. So you can tap, tap, tap to go forward and browse the, uh, the parameters in the numerical display until you find the one that you want. And if you overshoot it because you're tapping too fast, which I do all the time, then you can just hold the white button to uh, go back again. Okay, so holding step will index um, backwards. And if you like that automatic indexing, which some people do, they like to see uh, those uh, parameters each uh, cycling through a number, um, then you can just resume uh, automatic indexing once again. So the process is very um, straightforward. You press the black button and then you press the white button. So you press lean find, then you press step very quickly. So you want to do that relatively fast. If you just press lean find and you wait too long, it will actually enter uh, a lean find mode, which is a, a mode used to determine um, the best mixture setting. So um, if you've tapped lean find and then um, you get into that mode, I believe you can tap step to get out of that or possibly lean find. You'll see it in the, in the menus there. 
But the key is, if you want the automatic indexing to take place, tap the black button, then tap the white button very quickly, and it'll once again resume that automatic indexing. So um, the information that is uh, displayed there, again, can be manual or automatic, but it's only going to display information that is relative to where the switch position is. So when you install the EDM uh, 830 or 730, you also install an additional little toggle switch. And that little toggle switch has three settings that it can be on. Uh, one of them is, I believe, fuel flow, and then um, temperatures, uh, and then all. So let me show you some more about that switch here. The selector switch has an, um, three, three options, EGT, all, or FF for fuel flow. And depending on where we have that selected, uh, we'll determine what information is being cycled through the numerical display when we hit that step button. So in our aircraft, that little toggle switch is pretty small. I mean, they're small in every aircraft, but it's, it's kind of discreet. It's way down um, by the, uh, just above the trim wheel, which is actually uh, directly vertically in line with the EDM. So if you were to be functioning the EDM <coughs> in the upper right-hand corner of the panel, and you just trace a line straight down, uh, you'll, you'll get there. And it's sort of out of the way. Um, you're not going to bump it by accident, typically just below the carb heat knob above the trim, and you can function that. It's not used a whole lot. You typically um, don't use this. At least I don't use it a whole lot in flight. I usually set it to what I want and then leave it there. Uh, I often just have it on all um, and then cycle through what I need. Unless I'm, sometimes maybe if I'm on an IFR flight, I will have it in the fuel flow mode so that I can get some of those um, range uh, information um, data in through the numerical display, such as the fuel remaining at destination and fuel remaining uh, to fuel required to the next leg and that kind of thing. And then I might set up an automatic index to cycle through um, those fuel flow parameters. Uh, if you're maybe climbing, for example, um, or the, maybe you're more concerned with heat, uh, CHT and, uh, and or EGT, then you might have it in the EGT selection and have it um, cycling through that to show you the different temperatures. But you know, again, you have the actual graph, bar graph display and the CHT numbers, at least in our configuration. So most of the information you need is there already. Um, because we've uh, set up our display to maximize having 10 linear gauges available, uh, we find that we're not using the numerical display uh, as much as uh, you might if you had it in a different orientation with less linear gauges there. Okay, so that's where it is in our aircraft, and basically wherever that knob is, or that little toggle switch rather, uh, that's going to determine what information you are actually seeing in the numerical display uh, area. So I'm going to play another quick video here for you. Here. I'll just put it full screen here so you can see that. Your EDM gives you a large numerical scanner information area that shows individual cylinder information at a scan rate you choose. When the cylinder number is outlined, the bottom numerical display will show the EGT on the left four digits and the CHT on the right three digits. The selector switch allows you to switch between numeric displays of engine parameters, fuel flow, or both. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. The toggle switch, we've got three selections. Up, down, middle. Uh, the up one is exhaust gas temperature, EGT mode. So in there, uh, the, um, basically it was only gonna s we're only going to see in the numerical display um, engine parameters such as cylinder head temperature and exhaust gas temperature as well as uh, battery voltage information. So that's all that will scan through there. Um, in the down position, fuel flow, we're only going to see um, basically fuel flow parameter information like gallons per hour, uh, fuel endurance and hours and minutes, um, fuel uh, remaining, fuel used, and then the uh, GPS integrated information of uh, fuel to next waypoint, um, fuel uh, remaining, fuel reserve at the destination, which is your fuel on board when you land or at your next waypoint, and also uh, miles per gallon. It'll show you a miles per gallon uh, calculation as well. And then in the middle, it's all, it's basically going to cycle through everything. So if you find that you're looking for data in the numerical display and it's not showing up, um, that means one of two things. Either you don't have that um, 
that probe installed and you can't view it, or your toggle switch is simply in the up or down position and you're not uh, receiving all the information. Okay, so not too much there to really discuss a toggle switch, very small, kind of tiny, know where it is and, and know what uh, is going to happen when it's in, in up or down or middle position basically. Uh, let's show you uh, one more video here on some additional options and we'll talk about uh, some of those features too. Oh, I'm just going to full screen this for you. Other items on the numerical display, depending on your options, are oil temperature, oil pressure, shock cooling amount, battery voltage, outside air temperature, difference between the hottest and coolest cylinder, RPM and MAP. Right, so um, depending on, again, the features that you have installed, if you don't have the RPM sensor, manifold pressure sensor, it won't cycle through these uh, parameters, so you won't have those available. So the numerical display, um, basically it's that extra window where we can see more information. Um, we can see things like uh, oil temperature. Um, and again, we have these in the linear gauges. It's just a larger um, screen that will display it. So we can uh, just observe it maybe more readily. Um, in the uh, oil pressure, we can see that on there as well. Any, anything, any parameter that's in there, that's in the system will display on there. The nice thing is, um, as an alarm, with the alarms uh, situation, if we set an alarm, let's say our oil temperature max is 245, um, we can set an alarm, say, at 220 to notify the pilot, hey, it's getting pretty hot. Um, and if an alarm goes off, no matter what is displayed in the numerical display, and no matter what the position of the toggle switch, uh, that, um, that parameter will be displayed with uh, flashing red, in the numerical display if you reach that alarm limit. So that's a nice feature to bring front and center um, some of the dangerous things that may be occurring and uh, shows that on the screen there for you in a big display. Uh, just keep in mind of course as we've said that the uh, EDM is not a certified replacement for the analog gauges so for oil temperature and pressure we still need to have the other oil temperature and pressure um, gauges functioning. They need to be working but um, they're not going to flash at you when you start getting hot. <laughs> if it's a hot summer day and you're teaching somebody best angle of climb and the nose attitude is way up and the air cooling is way down and you're prolonging that climb for some time, then uh, you, will, you could very well get this, uh, this flashing display notifying you. So we've set all of our alarm limits um, below the maximum limitations so that we have some time to react and uh, make the change before we do any, any damage to the aircraft. Um, some other cool things that we could see in the uh, display are outside air temperature, if we wanted to keep that up. I mean, again, we have this in one of the linear gauges, but it's kind of nice to see maybe a little bit larger. Um, for us, uh, at the flight school here, we set minimum and maximum surface temperatures for daily operations. Uh, our minimum surface temperature is minus 20, and, um, you know, the airplane will fly in colder than minus 20, but, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to go flying in minus twenty. Jeez, so, you know these airplanes. Most of them, uh, they're not. Uh, they have a few cracks in them, and they don't get as warm as you'd like inside the cabin. So, who wants to go flying in minus twenty when you can uh, come in on the ground and maybe do a simulator session where there's uh, nice and warm and there's coffee on? So uh, minus twenty and plus thirty. You know that's another one that we have. So at least we have that um, that information on on the aircraft uh, EDM. So we can determine, uh, are we currently at our maximum? Perhaps you uh, depart on a, on a morning flight on a hot day and uh, you know it's plus 25 out. And as you get up to altitude, uh, you can see the temperature changing, which is kind of cool too. You can see the effects of altitude on outside air temperature and show that to your students. And then it drops to you know uh, plus 20 up at four or 5,000 feet. But then when you return to the ground, uh, you notice that the outside air temperature is now plus 30 or plus 29. Um, then you could notify the next uh, the next pilot or student or instructor that you know hey we're reaching our maximum operating temperatures and uh, we want to take care of these engines so we don't we typically don't fly above plus thirty uh, just because it's um, the air cooling is uh, it's, it's not the most robust air cooling system on a 1976 uh, 172 um, they're okay but uh, they certainly don't like those hot temperatures they run pretty baggy and uh, so we try to just manage 
manage the system there. So now we have another uh, piece of information telling us uh, where we are relative to the parameters that we're choosing to operate. And with outside air temperature, as I mentioned in uh, the introduction video, you know, if we're flying in IMC, we're doing IFR flying, uh, we're flying in cloud, then we definitely want to be concerned about temperatures approaching zero degrees. You know, we start getting in the plus one, two, three degrees, uh, we can uh, have a risk of some uh, impact airframe icing, and uh, at least we're getting close to that scenario anyway. So um, things to watch out for. Uh, we can also see um, seasonal trends with the outside air temperature. So how does um, a, a normal climb at 80 knots in the summertime at um, plus 25 compare to the same in the wintertime at minus 10? And uh, it's interesting to see the effects of that on cylinder head temperature and or exhaust gas temperature, mostly CHT we're concerned about. And uh, what things can we do in the summertime maybe to keep CHTs cooler, do a, more of an en route climb or um, a normal climb at 85 knots instead of best rate 78. So um, things like that that can be observed through the outside air temperature. Uh, that probe itself is mounted on the left wing just under the... Uh, just beside the pitot tube rather. It's mounted, uh, it's a little silver um, stick that sticks down about two inches and it uh, is outside of the relative airflow of the propeller so it gets um, kind of more accurate information. So that's basically it, it's kind of a short video on just uh, the numerical display, the toggle switch. Um, basically it's only gonna toggle between um, items that you have installed and uh, if you're ever not getting the information that you want to see there in the numerical display, it might be because the toggle switch, the selector switch, is uh, in the wrong position. So you can put it to all or put it up to EGT or down to fuel flow as you need. Um, remember that uh, the white step button is what basically advances through the numerical display options. If you tap it, it goes forward. If you hold it, it goes backwards. If you want to resume uh, automatic indexing, that's the black button followed by the white button very quickly, and that will go into an auto indexing mode. The default is four seconds for indexing. You can change that default actually in the menu system if you want it to be longer or shorter. Um, for me, for some scenarios, different scenarios, I usually have different things uh, indexing. So uh, when I'm climbing, I might have auto indexing of uh, temperatures, CHTs and EGTs. And when I'm uh, on an IFR flight, I might have an auto indexing in the fuel flow mode to show me uh, the range uh, uh, and uh, fuel to destination, fuel res remaining at reserve at landing and that kind of scenario. So it's kind of customizable to what you want and especially if you have less linear gauges you may want to take more advantage of the auto indexing mode. Otherwise you might just um, set it to a specific one and, and monitor that. Um, in the descending scenario, we might um, put on the uh, cold function, the CLD, which is the shock cooling one, just to bring uh, to light uh, a greater visibility of the shock cooling that we're doing. So prior to making the power reduction, we might put that parameter into the numerical display so we can watch that. So different strokes for different folks, whatever you like, but that's a brief overview of the numerical display and how that system works with the toggle switch. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. You got something out of that. Um, the next module, we're going to talk about CHT and EGT in a little bit more detail. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching. Take care.